Hey guys, it's Shelly here from Photo Tripping America and the Solo Traveler community. One of the most frequent questions I get asked as a full-time RVer is how do I make a living on the road? Well today, I'll show you exactly what I do. And I may mention a few other careers that work really well for full-time RVers. If you stick around, I'll even show you my workspace that I've created in my RV, complete with computers, monitors, printers, I even have a microphone set up for podcasting. So take a look, see what you think. It seems like everyone is looking for a way to work from home these days, especially after going through the COVID crisis. But those of us who are full-time RVers have secondary concerns. We need to find a job where we can work from home and one that will travel with us as we hit the road. Well, I got asked this question so many times that within the Solo Traveler community, our membership group, I created a list of 19 different types of jobs that work well for those of us that like to travel. Let's take a look at a few. Let me tell you before we get into the list that these job types are not only listed in the Solo Traveler community, but I've created an entire training module to teach you how to get work doing all 19 of these categories of jobs. So you might want to take a look there after you've watched the video. I'll list a link below. Now I can tell you that job number one I have quite a bit of experience in. I've been a photographer for well over 20 years and my day job for many years before I ever decided to hit the road was as a stock photographer, a product photographer, and I did a lot of sports photography and school photography as well. Now, from within the Solo Traveler community, I have created step-by-step um, -step tutorials for each of these types of photography jobs. They'll take you from the very beginning to how to select the settings on your camera, all the way through to how to submit your images to different photo editors. Job type number two would be to create a blog or website. Job type number three I'm doing quite a bit of right now, which is writing. And you can do that from anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection. Remote work, we're finding out quite a bit about that recently with the COVID crisis. There are hundreds of thousands of workers who are working from home remotely. Number five is affiliate marketing. And number six, a lot of our teachers are, uh, were thrust into this with online teaching, but you can create your own courses online now. Number seven, product creation. Number eight is an online store and uh, something like Etsy or a Shopify store. Number nine would be local instructional opportunities. You might be able to stop in at your local uh, community college if you're traveling on the road and offer to teach a weekend course in baking or in yoga and several different things that you could be an expert at. Job type number 10 would be mobile professional jobs, things like uh, nurses who take traveling contracts for three or four months in one area and keep moving, or engineers, all kinds of different mobile professionals. Number 11 would be speaking engagements. You can travel and still see the country while you make money at speaking engagements. Number 12 would be seasonal jobs, and I have done a few of these as I travel. I'll just pick up a job when I need one. Um, I've waited tables in Alaska. Um, I have sold tickets at ski areas, all kinds of different things. Job type number 13 are traveling service businesses. That would be people like uh, if you are a hairstylist, you could probably do it from the RV park if you wanted to as you travel. Or dog groomer, uh, an RV repair person as well would be mobile. Job type number 14 is business consulting. And let's say that you have retired from a professional career. Um, you could offer yourself as a business consultant via Skype calls or Zoom and still spread your expertise around. Number 15 is a social media manager. As long as you have a phone and an internet connection, you can handle someone else's social media for them and charge them probably a pretty penny. The job category 16 is podcasting. There are a variety of ways that you can make money from podcasting, including job type number 17, by getting a company to sponsor you through advertising. That could be on your podcast, on your website, or in a variety of different ways. 
Job type number 18 is how I make all of my fuel money for my RV through mystery shopping. And finally, job type number 19 is what you're watching right now, a YouTube channel. So these are all things to give you ideas about how you might be able to make a living as you travel across the country. I've mixed and matched several of them. And like I said, this is just a list, but I have full training for each of these different 19 categories within the Solo Traveler membership community. Well, now that I've shown you 19 different categories of jobs that work well on the road, I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, what types of jobs can I get to make a living as I travel? Well, we've come to the important part. I need to show you how to set up your own work area in your RV that gives you dedicated space to complete that work once you get it. I mentioned before that I'm a photographer by trade and I still continue to make a living doing that as I travel. I still submit my images to stock photo agencies. I sell um, prints and canvases in my Etsy store and I do a variety of different things as I shoot images on the road. I'm also a writer by trade, and I work for four or five different agencies all at the same time. So I had different needs when I thought about setting up my own workspace within the RV. When I purchased Wyatt, my Wild West RV, he came with a sofa configuration in the living area, along with some tacky aquamarine carpeting. But I was able to take one sofa out and build a desk. This is the result. I used a tall end table that someone had given me and placed a longer board across the top to extend the countertop space. Then I slid my file cabinet in underneath. Now I was ready to start putting equipment on top. Well, at least Sully seems impressed with the whole setup. And here's what I came up with. Well, here, let me label everything for you. I recently had to upgrade from my old tower desktop computer to a new laptop. Yes, we had a nice funeral service for that desktop. It had served me well. But I took a laptop and attached it to my existing 27-inch monitor because as a photographer, I like to see images in Photoshop up close and personal. Um, I mounted it on a swing arm, which I attached to the wall. I had solid wood back there in a frame around my window. And that works very well. On top of the 27 inch monitor, I've got my webcam. And to either side, I have hung uh, new speakers that I went ahead and got when I got the laptop. All of this, including the wireless keyboard and mouse and my external hard drive and printer are all attached through a docking station, which they're making smaller and smaller these days. So it fits back there in the corner. I use the webcam for Zoom calls and Skype calls, whether they be business or personal. It's quite handy, especially if you're on the road full time to stay in touch with everyone. And I went ahead and set up a microphone stand with a pop filter, knowing that I was going to be creating teaching videos for the Solo Traveler membership group, as well as creating these YouTube videos. So it's quite handy and very inexpensive way to um, set it up. I also have an external hard drive. Um, I have two hard drives in the laptop, but as a photographer, I have need for a lot of redundancy as far as storing my images and a lot of room for the images as well. So I have several actually external hard drives, but that blue one is a very small four terabyte hard drive. And then I've got some other externals hidden behind the laptop there. But you can see that this suits me well as a photographer and writer. I have everything I need right there. And I actually didn't show it, but I've also got a regular size office chair, which is very comfortable. It's ergonomic, so I can sit for hours without hurting my back or anything else. And I have set up the monitor so that it is at eye level, which is really handy as well. Now, when I had the desktop computer, the tower actually sat on the floor right behind the front seat there. So there's plenty of room on the floor. It's now been replaced by a big subwoofer that goes with the speakers because you can't travel full time without your tunes. <laughs> the rationale behind creating this entire desktop workspace was I wanted an area for my work that I didn't have to break down every time we traveled. 
And now that we um, have hooked the monitor to the wall, it works exceedingly well. I can fold that monitor back against the wall and bungee cord it. And I drop the keyboard tray and bungee cord my office chair to the desk legs on that table. And we are off and running. We're ready to roll. So this works well for me, but I have known people who just needed a space for a laptop and they will set up a board with uh, in the front passenger seat and work from their laptop that way. So you need to figure out what type of work you might be doing and how big the space is that you need to design for your own dedicated work area. But this might give you a few ideas. You'll find all of these things that I have labeled here listed individually in the notes below this video in case you're looking for some of the items. I know some of them were hard for me to find, so I hunted them down. Everything but the Wi-Fi hotspot is listed in the notes below. And that Wi-Fi hotspot, you'll have to figure out your own deal for that as far as internet access is concerned through your uh, cellular company. But I hope this gives you an idea of how you can set up your own workspace to fit your own particular needs. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you next week on Photo Tripping America.